Well, we have a guest speaker today, and uh, he's okay. And uh, I like to refer to Mark Brumbelow as my Operation Christmas Child hero, which I hear that that might make you feel a little strange, Mark. <laughs> but, but Mark inspired me in 2018. He and his wife uh, went to lunch with us at, at a round table. I know, I know. What does that mean? Nothing. Yes. We went, to, we went to lunch at round table, and I heard about how a church of 35 with no kids was doing, it wasn't quite 10,000 boxes a year at that time, but so many boxes, and that really inspired me, and we started to do more things here. We started to do more packing parties. The youth group had done a packing party, but we, we've been doing more. We did more boxes last year as a county than we ever had. We did like over 600, I think, the, the year before that. We, did, we were just shy of 1,100 this last year as a whole county. So anyways, this is, this is the man and his wife who inspired me. And so I'm really excited to have him here. This is who Andy flew out to see uh, last year. And of course, Andy's preaching down at Hayford Community today, but really excited. So would you welcome him up here? And Sherry, are you coming too? So this is on. Okay. Do you, do, would you like this microphone, or is that no, one sufficient? This, you this can pass it back. Married too long, and if we both had a mic, we'd be like talking over each other. Oh, that would be entertaining. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what a privilege to be here today, and and I'll tell you what, I, I grew to love your pastor <laughs> five years ago and recognized him as a man that loves Jesus and loves to see people come to know Jesus. And that means the world to us to be here today. I'm the pastor of the Grace Baptist Church in Wild Peach, Texas, about an hour south of Houston down on the Gulf Coast. And when this story that we're about to tell began, in 2013, well, our church was about 23 people, none that had much of what this world calls wealth. Y'all, one of my favorite passages in this book here is 2 Chronicles 16, 9, where it says, The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of a people whose heart is perfect toward him. And what we've got to tell this morning, oh, people, it's not about us, but it's about how he's shown himself strong on our behalf as we leaned our hearts toward him in this ministry of Operation Christmas Child. Amen. So I want to give you all a little bit of background. We started packing shoeboxes way back in 2003, and we would pack as individual families and bring our boxes to the church. and. During those years, we'd pack seven or 10 or 20 shoe boxes. Well, in 2013, our congregation packed 43 shoe boxes. Wow, we were so excited, and we brought them all up in front and stacked them in front of the pulpit. And then Mark called all of us up front to gather around those boxes and pray and ask God to bless what we had done, and he did. Well, also in 2013, we had the amazing privilege of going to the processing center in Dallas, Texas. And y'all, that was a life-changing experience for us. First of all, we walked into this warehouse with thousands of shoe boxes, and we began to realize the magnitude of this ministry. But more importantly than that, we began to hear stories and testimonies of the evangelistic emphasis that goes with every single box. And learning about the gospel message and how powerful it was going out with these boxes, we knew by the time we left Dallas we needed to do more. You know, on the way home from Dallas, God had stirred our hearts. And, and you know, Sherry kind of blindsided me. She said, I believe that our church needs to pack 500 shoeboxes next year. <laughs> well, now, I was sure proud of the 43 that we had just packed. <laughs> and people, I'm still proud of them 43. Oh, it rocked the world of 43 children that Jesus died for. But, you know, I thought about it for a little while, and I said, you know, I believe that we could do that. But I believe that it would hurt the other mission causes that our church supports. After all, there's just so much money to go around in a church our size. But let's pray about it. 
Boy, what a novel thought for a pastor, for a church to start praying about what, what the Lord would want them to do. And you know, shortly after that, I was preaching out of 2 Kings chapter 4. And Brother Jesse, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but sometimes I'll preach my heart out and I don't know if the people got a thing, but God will speak to me through it. And y'all know the story about how the widow went to Elisha the prophet and said, the creditors are come to take my children as slaves. There's nothing that I can do. And that preacher said, what do you have in your house? And she said, nothing but just a little pot of oil. And he said, you go get empty containers from all your neighbors. Get a bunch of them. And she did. And y'all know how she came back. And that preacher said, you go in the house with your children, shut the doors, pour the oil into the containers, sell the oil, pay your bills, and live off the rest. Now, God started speaking to me. And in that passage, it was the widow's responsibility to get empty containers. But people, it was God's responsibility to fill the containers. And God spoke just as clear that day, can you get 500 empty shoeboxes? Lord, we can and we will. And he said, you get them and watch what I do from there. Now, I wish y'all all could have been there when Mark stood before that tiny congregation and announced that God was calling us to pack 500 shoeboxes. <laughs> if you can kind of picture that deer in the headlights look across the entire congregation. But what's so awesome is they love their pastor and they trust him. And if he said that God said, they said, well, we'll try. And that's exactly what happened. We just began to step out and do what God had called us to do. We have folks bringing in little bags from the dollar store of toys. Some of our ladies began couponing and they were paying them to take stuff out of the stores. And just so many things happened. But by the end of that season, Grace Baptist Church had packed 532 shoebox gifts. And it's just, it's all to God's glory because we know it was not of us. And one of the commitments our church has made from the very beginning is to pay the suggested donation for every shoebox that left our church. So Mark reminded us throughout the year that we were continuing that commitment. And he asked us to pray and ask God to show each of us what to do toward that donation. Yeah. And we did that. And so on our celebration Sunday, as we gathered our boxes and our money and everything and announced what it was, Mark was able to announce that all of the money had come in to pay for those 532 boxes. But he did something that day that I believe transformed our church even to this day. He said, if you've been praying about what to give and you've not yet given, he said, today's your chance to come clean with God. So we passed our offering plates through the congregation again, and when they came back, there was $400 in there. That was exciting because we send whatever comes in in a season goes out that season. But more exciting to me than that was to realize that our congregation had stepped out of the realm of reason into the realm of obedience. They knew the need had been met, but they found it more important to obey God than to worry about what the real need was, because God knows the real need. Y'all remember my apprehension about it hurting the other mission causes that our church supports? God showed me a little bit that year of how big He is. And every other mission cause that our church supports more than doubled what it had ever been before. You see, God was saying, I love this ministry, and I love this one and this one and this one too. And you do what I tell you. You follow me and I'll take care of all the rest of them too. 2015 coming on. God, what do you want us to do? How many shoe boxes would you like for us to pack? And he said 2,000 this year. And you know, I announced that to our people in January. And they didn't look at me like I'd lost my mind this year because they had seen the blessings and provisions of God the year before. Our people were different. And so their response was, it's a big goal, so we need to get started now. And you know, we did. And that year's storage became a huge issue for us. Anytime you start following God, you're going to run into problems. But God, out of the open window of heaven, 
provided a 40-foot shipping container. We insulated it and air conditioned it to where crayons wouldn't melt in the boxes. We painted it shoebox green. If it weren't for the smoke today, you might could <laughs> see it from here. It didn't beautify our property, but people know where we're at now. But now God taught us so many wonderful things that year. He started teaching us how to buy in bulk. He started teaching us how to get the after holiday sales, the, the back to school sales that are right now. Uh, he taught us so many things, but that year he allowed us out of his hand to pack 2,172 boxes. And the day before we needed it, he provided all of the shipping expense plus more. All glory to Him. But you know, looking back, I believe that one of the main things He was teaching us mm -hmm. is that Jesus still means what He said in Luke 6, 38, where He said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Amen. So as we began to pray in 2016, Lord, how many shoeboxes do you want us to pack? And and I hope y'all caught that. We started out packing shoeboxes with a benevolent mindset and also thinking, what can I afford to do? But when we began to ask God, what do you want us to do? That's when things kind of went crazy. Well, in 2016, he gave us the number of 5,000 shoebox gifts. And you know, it's okay when you're praying, asking God what to do, ask him to give you confirmation. You know, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get way ahead of God. I get excited, but you know, that's not a good place to be way out there ahead of God, but nor is it good to be behind. We want to be right in his will because that's where the blessings are. Well, when Mark announced to our congregation that God was calling us to pack 5,000 shoebox gifts, God confirmed that in so many ways. But one thing he did is after that, four of our members came up and said, Pastor, I just want you to know I've been praying. And that's exactly the number that God gave me. And y'all, it's so wonderful to grow in the Lord with your congregation. So we set out to do what God had called us to do. We were up to about 30 members by then. And when you're seeking God's will, you need to always be looking and listening because he will direct your paths. And that year, God sent somebody very unique to our church. So Mark, kind of give us a short version of about Brother, that fellow. Brother Jesse, there's a crazy old man that started visiting our church. Well. <laughs> and this man, he had lived a hard life as an alcoholic. He had problems. He would come in the church house and he'd tell stories that you really wish he hadn't have told. And he was <laughs> loud about it. He would use words that you never heard used in the church house before loudly. But we loved that old man, and he loved us. And he got to telling me one day about how him and one of his buddies used to go years before and buy toys at a wholesale warehouse in Houston real cheap. And they'd take them and resell them and make money. And he said, that's what y'all need to do with these shoeboxes. And I carefully listened to where it was, and it's not there anymore. But it had been 40 years earlier. Oh, but he planted a seed. Of course there's wholesale warehouses in Houston. We found them, a whole district full of them. But now, people, there's a spiritual lesson in this. If we're to be very good imitators of Jesus, we better be loving and listening to the crazy old men of this world. Oh, we better be reaching out to people where they are. We better be loving the unlovely. Amen. And we never know along the way when God's going to teach us something marvelous. Amen. Amen. You know, Mark preaches to our congregation a lot, and he tells us when God calls you to do something, do what you can do, and God will do the rest. And that's what we've experienced at our church. God has sent so many blessings. And by the end of 2016, we packed 5,321 shoeboxes. And by God's grace, all of the suggested donation was covered, and even extra. You know, the next year coming on, God, what do you want us to do? He said, I want you to pack 6,975 this year. Well, now, I'm a little bit OCD. That, the unevenness of the number troubled me. We've got ceiling fans down the middle of our building. If, if one of them ceiling fans is turning different speed, 
than the others. I find it difficult to preach. But, <laughs> but now, I like even numbers. But the significance of that number would mean that when we reach the goal that we will have packed 15,000 in the previous four years. And we did something that year that's since become a tradition. On New Year's Eve, we had our first packing party of the year. Y'all, we've popped firecrackers, we've played dominoes, we've done everything imaginable to see out an old year. And that year we decided that we'd rather try to reach children for Jesus before it's eternally too late than anything else we could think of. We were on real good track to reach that goal when on August 25th of that year, Hurricane Harvey just hammered the whole Texas coast. In a church, I guess we was 35 people by then, seven households damaged or destroyed in that storm, with mine and Cherry's being one of them. Fifteen homeless people living in the church house, trying to put our lives back together. And we had a packing party planned for September. God, what do you want us to do? He said, you have that packing party. It's who you are. Don't you let the devil get victory in this storm. And y'all, we had it. And there was joy that you could feel in there that day, and a day that we desperately needed some joy. Every flooded household was represented there that day. Boy, what a blessing. But now I know that God's got a special plan for every box that's packed. But we just somehow knew that there was something different for these boxes. Sherry, tell them quickly about the difference. So Samaritan's Purse heard that we had packed shoe boxes while many of us were still living in the church building. So they reached out to us and they told us about a distribution that was being planned for the boys and girls of the island of Barbuda that had just been wiped out by Hurricane Irma. And they wanted to know if they could come get some boxes from us. They wanted to have boxes packed by hurricane victims to distribute to hurricane victims. And of course, we were elated and we told them to come get all they wanted. They said, well, there's just one thing. We want you and Mark to come and deliver these and hand out these boxes. So we had the amazing privilege on to travel on the Samaritan's Purse DCA airplane that was carrying disaster relief supplies and shoe boxes and a few folks there to that island. We got there in the middle of the night, rested a while, toured the island the next day, which was a heart-wrenching experience. And then we came back to Antigua where we were going to pass out the boxes to the boys and girls. God moved. He, You know, we had been grieved seeing the island, but God cheered our hearts when he reminded us not only were we going to offer them joy for the moment when we handed them a beautiful shoebox full of toys, but they were going to hear a gospel presentation yeah. geared to children, inviting them to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. Joy for the moment, for sure, but the best part was joy for eternity to be offered to those yeah. boys and girls. Yeah. You know, that year, when our world had been turned upside down, God allowed us to pack 8,044 boxes. He allowed us, me to have an even number. <laughs> and out of His hand, out of His hand, He allowed us to pay over $13,000 more than our shipping expense. You see, God was saying that I'm bigger than any storm this world can ever throw. The next year, oh, he gave us a goal of 10,000. He supernaturally allowed for us to reach the goal and surpass it. And I did something to your phone, Sherry. But now, you know, there's a freedom in dealing with impossible numbers. Because numbers really become irrelevant. The only number that really matters is what did the, what's the number God gave you. Because without Him, you cannot succeed. But with Him, people, you can't fail. Amen. And when you're working with His goal, it really, in a large part, becomes His problem. But now, can I go back and tell you about these seven flooded households? Malachi chapter 3 
tells us that if we'll honor God with our money, he says, you just see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out what you can't even receive, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. He's done it as plain as I've ever seen to the point where every flooded household in our church is better off than they were before the flood. When me and Sherry go home in a couple or three days, we'll be going home to a beautiful, comfortable home, provided quite literally out of the open window of heaven through Samaritan's Purse, disaster relief. All glory to him. If he never blessed me again, I'd have to go to my grave praising him. So we love telling year to year, and there's so many, many stories we could tell. But we kind of want to shift gears a little bit with y'all and share some stories of some of the things that God's done. But before we kind of move into the storytelling, Mark, share with them kind of where we're at right now and give them an update. You know, this year, God's given us the goal to pack 14,000 boxes. And you know, right now, I'm proud to tell you that 10,574 are ready to go today. And now we're having our next packing party next Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning, Central Time. And you're invited. Don't be late. <laughs> but now it's going to be a glory day, and we're going to press on toward the goal that God's given us. Mm -hmm. And uh, y'all pray that we'll serve him well there. Amen. Yeah. So you know us grandparents, we love to talk about our grandbabies. So I want to tell you a little bit about our oldest granddaughter, Hannah. When Hannah was five years old, she accepted Jesus as her personal Savior. And shortly after that, we were teaching the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program that Samaritan's Purse has. We were teaching that at our church, and Hannah joined that class. The first part of the Greatest Journey is teaching kids about Jesus and invite them to come to know him as their personal savior. The second half of the Greatest Journey Discipleship Program is teaching these new little believers how to be disciples, how to win their family and their friends to Christ. Well, at five years old, Hannah went through that entire program. Fast forward to last year, Hannah turned 13 years old and she had invited her best friend to one of our packing parties. And I watched the girls. They were having a great time. But I did notice they disappeared for a little while. Well, then Hannah came and got me. And she said, Grammy, can you come talk to us for a minute? And I said, well, Graham sure is busy right now. And she leaned in and she said, well, Grammy, Natalie just got saved. So I turned around and I told my team, y'all, I'll be back. And so we walked in a side room. And I said, well, so girls, what's going on? Hannah said, well, Grammy, I led Natalie to the Lord today, but in case I didn't do it right, will you talk to her? So when I was able to get my composure back, we looked at the scripture. Well, Hannah had taken her through every scripture. I said, well, Natalie, do you want to pray and receive Christ? She said, well, I did that with Hannah. I said, well, then we're just going to rejoice. And I asked her, would she be willing to stand before a crowd of people that she did not know and share with them what she had done that day? She thought about it for a minute, and she said, well, yes, I would. So I told Mark what happened, and he shut down the entire packing party. We have probably 50 or 60 people there, people everywhere. He called everybody out to the front and let Natalie share that she had accepted Jesus that day. I love to share that story because I want you to know Operation Christmas Child, we know, is reaching the world with the gospel message. But I want you to realize, too, it's reaching people right here. When you're involved in this ministry, there's no telling how God will use it, even in your own life and family and church. You know, as we pack these shoe boxes, I've got to admit that my faith is not what it ought to be. But I struggle sometime after seeing the provisions of God year after year. I struggle with this shipping expense, with this suggested donation. It's a daunting sum when you're talking about thousands of boxes. And you know, I never will forget checking the church mail right before collection week. And there were two pieces of mail hand addressed in the mailbox. One, a card written from a little lady in Hawaii that we've never met, written in what was apparently the shaky handwriting of an old person. I'm getting that shaky handwriting now. But now, 
in that card, she wrote that she had heard about what God had, done, had been doing in our church and wondered if she could help. And she sent a check for $20. Oh, I held that up out in the post office parking lot and I worshiped the God of heaven. Here a lady was obeying him. And I opened another envelope that was from a man in Georgia that we don't know. And it was a piece of paper that said, OCC Shipping Grace Baptist. Scrawled out on a sheet of paper and folded around a check for $10,000. And I held it up. And I held up the $20 check. And I praised God because he was the source of both. And then my mind got to wondering, well, which one's the biggest? Oh, we're not qualified to touch that. You know, it could be that the $20 one was far bigger than the $10,000. You see, we're enamored with big numbers, but God's enamored with our obedience. And the point is that it was two people faithfully obeying God, and we praise Him for both of them. And God used both of them, oh, in a mighty way that year. Amen. He sure did. And you know, when you step out to do God's will, it doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. Sometimes that path gets difficult. Sometimes you lose your home to a hurricane and all kinds of things. Well, we were on our way up to Houston to some of those warehouses Mark told you all about to do some shopping. And on the way, Mark was just really fretting that we did not have enough money to buy the amount of toys that we needed for our upcoming packing party. And he told me, he said, man, we really need another $1,000 to do what we need to do. And we talked about it. We prayed about it. Said, well, Lord, we'll do what we can with what you've provided. And we were a bit stressed. And so we got up there and we were in this big warehouse and I was over here and he was over here and we're shopping. And my phone rang and it was some good friends of ours. And they know that the Thursday before a packing party, we're going to be in Houston shopping. So they called and said, we know you're up at the warehouse, but we owe you an apology. They said, God laid on our heart to send you a check for... Y'all can imagine how much, $1,000. And we're so sorry we let time get away, but if you can spend it, I'll put the check in the mail today. Well, of course, I was just overwhelmed, and I just told them. I said, well, I'm going to give the phone to Mark. Will you please tell him that? Yeah. And they did. And so we were able to spend that $1,000 that we knew we needed to get what we needed. And God does it in all different ways, but that day he, yeah. he sent it at the last minute just what we needed to buy the toys for the next packing party. You know, there was another packing party. Do y'all remember all this COVID time when supply chains were interrupted? I'm so sick of hearing the word COVID. But Supply chains were interrupted. Prices going up, up, up. Y'all know it. And we had a packing party planned. And we didn't have enough stuff. We had bought every slinky and yo-yo in the wholesale district in Houston. There were no more. We had bought other toys too. But, but now, y'all, it didn't matter that there wasn't any more. We were out of money anyway. And we went... I took the stuff back to the church and I knew that we were accustomed to packing 11 or 1200 shoe boxes at a packing party then and I knew that we had the stuff to pack maybe 700 boxes. I told our project leader, I said, John, if we pack 700 boxes, God will let us catch up later. It'll be all right. Brother Jesse, I was trying to convince myself what I was doing. But now, he, at the beginning of the packing party, oh, praise God for project leaders that are men and women of faith. For sure. And he put out a thousand shoe boxes knowing that we didn't have the stuff to put in them. And y'all, as we started the packing party, well, he said... People, we don't have the stuff that we need. Would you pray that God would multiply what we have? And y'all, that made me feel about that tall. Because that would have been a nice thing for the preacher to have thought of. But now, as we began packing these boxes, there's some things that I can put my fingers on. There was a lady from a mega church in Houston 
that came that day about 45 minutes late bring in several hundred beautiful little handmade dresses that a sewing club and her mega church had made. They were rolled up and rubber banded and categorized by age. They were ready to put in boxes. Now I can tell you that that happened. But now it gets a little foggy after that. But we packed the thousand boxes that had been set out. And there was stuff left. And he said, go get another hundred boxes. Get another hundred. Get another. And that day, by God's grace, we packed 1,702 boxes. And y'all, when the smoke cleared, we had slinkies and yo-yos left over. Now, you can believe as you wish to believe. Oh, but I know in my heart that the one that reached into a boy's sack lunch one day and fed 5,000 people was doing something with the yo-yos and slinkies at Grace Baptist Amen. Church. It's all about him. Oh, he'll do it different, but he'll do it wonderful every time. You know, people ask us sometimes as we get to privilege to travel around, well, what's your fundraising program? How do you raise that money for the toys? How do you raise the money for the shipping? And Plain and simply, I tell our people to pray and say, God, what do you want me to give? And then each person, do as God leads you to give. And then after you've done what God told you to do, pray according to Jeremiah 33.3 that he'll do what we can't do. And he does it. Do you know what Jeremiah 33 3 says? Oh, it's a blank check from heaven. God says, if you need anything, you holler at me. And I'll show you what's bigger than you can wrap your head around. Isn't that about what he says? He says, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The people, a wonderful truth is that when we're working with God's number that he's given us, God pays for what he orders. Amen. Well, and we want y'all to know that we realize God doesn't want every church to do just what we're doing. Right. He's not looking for carbon copy churches. And so we've had a blast sharing things with y'all today. But really, the only message we have is to pray and ask God what he would have you do and then step out in fearless obedience. And then, you know, some things we've learned. You can do more when you work on it all year long. It's a ministry that everybody can be a part of. One of my favorite packing parties was we had a family that had just joined our church with a little baby carrying one of them little front backpack things. And daddy was getting toys and letting the baby put them in the box. And that same day we had a lady there that was celebrating her 99th birthday. And I remember stepping back and watching we had a 12-month-old and a 99-year-old. And what a beautiful picture that day was that it truly is a ministry that anybody can be a part of. Yeah. You know, they say that when Queen Mary was getting well up in years that she loved to go to the north of England and spend summers there. And while she was there, it was a different age then. And she loved to take long walks across the countryside, dressed in plain clothes, or even the clothes of a bum sometimes. And one day, as she was a long ways away, dressed like a bum, it began to rain. And she went and knocked on the door of a little farmhouse and asked the lady of the house for the use of her umbrella. And that lady, not wanting to give her good umbrella to this bum at the door, went and got an old cast-off one with broke ribs and holes in it and loaned it to Queen Mary. They said that the next day, as the royal courier came, returning the umbrella with a letter of thanks from Queen Mary, that as the courier was leaving, that this lady with her head hung down kept muttering over and over again, had I known it was the queen, I would have given her my best. 
Oh, if I'd known it was the queen, I would have given my best. Y'all, as we pack shoe boxes this year, oh, let's don't forget that we're doing it for the King of Kings, for the Lord of Lords. Let's give him the best that we've got. And you know, all the joys of heaven are not far away from us. I believe more than ever before that we're in the last days and that Jesus is coming back soon. I'm not looking for a hole in the ground, people. I'm looking for a hole in the sky. I believe He's coming soon. But now, we can't imagine very well the joys of heaven. But let me tell you, a joy you'll never experience in heaven is the joy of reaching another child for Jesus. We've got to do all that we can while we're here. This book says to work because the night comes when no man can work. Brother Jesse, I believe it's getting dusky dark toward that night when no man can work. And oh, let's say it, serve him faithfully. with all the time that we have left. God bless you all. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mark and Sherry. Some inspired words. I don't think we have the kids back yet from, uh, from Children's Church, but... Could I have a few volunteers to uh, come and pick up a couple boxes? And if you just raise your hand, somebody can bring them to you. Can we do that? Just walk up here if you're willing to, willing to help and just grab some. And We're giving you a box for you to fill up and bring back. And uh, if you want to, just, just say peace, right? <laughs> we, can, we can do that. We're not uh, as far ahead as Mark and Sherry. We don't have 10,000 boxes done already. We're starting our, uh, our fall push. We, we do this until Thanksgiving. That's when the collection week is. And um, it's pretty, pretty exciting. Last year we had some very large gifts where um, when they all came together, the, the gifts amounted to about $12,000. And uh, that's the money that I went shopping at a bunch of different places, looked for the discount stores. I worked pretty hard as a professional shopper. First time I've been that before. And, and that's when we invited uh, Mountain Chapel to help us. And we, we lined toys all the way around the room to do a, a packing party. So certainly you can take a box and you can uh, fill it up. Or you can give it to somebody else to bring back so we can count it. But another way to do this is to uh, sponsor a packing party. And uh, just like I kept hearing Mark and Sherry say, it sounds like you have a monthly packing party. Is that right? You have 10 a year. You have 10 a year. So they have 10 a year where people just gather things. So um, that's another thing you can do. If you have a bunch of toothbrushes, you can bring toothbrushes. We have some in our pantry. We, we use... <laughs> We use a lot of things that are given to us for people who just stop by the church, and we're having a lot of people stop by the church. I'd say we, we're having two or three uh, families or couples a week right now while the weather is good. So we do the crisis care kits uh, also that we're sending to Hawaii, talk about different ministries that, that we sponsor, but this is another one so if if you wanted to sponsor something like that or a group of you that would be a lot of fun that's something that we go shopping and we set up the toys and then we ask the congregation to help pack and that's kind of fun because it's like shopping without spending any money because somebody else already put the money forward so anyways those are a couple different options but i really want to thank you mark and sherry for coming and telling your story and i just i just find it God so inspiring to even you, use you guys in uh, Wild Peach, Texas. <laughs> so anyways, can we just thank them for coming? <laughs> We're finishing a little bit early uh, today, but the benediction should be on the cover of your bulletin. It's where we started today. 
Let the little children come to me, Jesus said, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Amen. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.